Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. I want to show you what we are working on today. We are renovating a lot of uh, our critters. So we will be moving the chickens, putting up new fencing, adjusting and tweaking, moving our dogs as well. Just because um, it's time for us to rotate and uh, move some stuff around. So that's what we're working on today. I wanna show you, this is the backyard behind the fence, the big wooden fence. Now, what we are doing is we are putting in cattle fencing here, which will be the basis. And then we'll be putting chicken wire over the top of it. And we will be running fencing all the way up to halfway down this pipe where this pipe is. We're going to be incorporating some cool stuff into this. We're going to automate the chickens a little bit so it will be easier for us to work on. But my first uh, string that I set up, I measured. This is 30 feet right here. And my first string, I was off. And you can see, now this is nice. This is at 10 feet. This is at 10 feet. That's at 10 feet. You get the idea. You can add. I'm off. And a lot of you, well, some of you, have never seen one of these guys in action. This is a T-post jack or a T-post port. Now, I know that you can use that to rock it back and forth on the teeth of the T-post. You can. And I've done it. Um, I don't know if I've ever done a video on it because to me it is just, it's harder to do. But I pounded this in. It is in the wrong spot. And leverage. We're under that tooth. And you just lift it up and jack it out. and it automatically cams down because of gravity. How about that? I'm not gonna pull it up all the way because it'll fall because I'm using one hand to show you and uh, one hand to work the jack. How about that? Now, got a lot of stuff happening today and uh, we're working with some new software. We're gonna be using the cell phone a whole lot more and I've got some really good software. You might look at the previous video that I did on uh, preparing. Um, where we live, eh, the, the, the video prior to that, it was a 20 minute video. It took me 48 hours to load that video. Two days. Two days, I, I'm not exaggerating. 48 hours to load a 20 minute video. And so we're going to start using the cell phone a lot more. Got some really cool software, but I would ask you to justify it, especially to the hooch. Hit the like button hit the subscribe button you know we are also on patreon and you get a lot of behind the scenes stuff a lot of the cussing and the oopses well in addition to a lot of other stuff uh that we do on the channel so we're getting ready to get this thing started i'm going to probably do like a 10 minute video showing you what we're doing and then you'll have a few videos of how we're doing it as we do it more time Okay, guys, you can see that we are progressing. I want to do all of the, let's call it wet work right now. We're going to set this concrete. I always set my concrete post dry. That's what I always do. And I've done it for, shoot, um, I'm 52. I've been doing this since I was 16. So I've been doing it for a very long time. I've never had any problems with it. I always say God waters it. I set it and uh, then we're done. But the kick in the butt, the hooch, my wife has always asked me when I do these fences, if I could make them even, she says, because it bothers her. And I never cared. Sometimes I would have one eight inches higher than the other. If I had a longer run, I would put it here. If I was doing like 500 foot run of a, uh, five-strand barbed wire, 
Oh, well, if this was going to be a corner, I, I would be using a telephone post or a, a railroad tie. But I then would take one of these eight feet long and put it here, put it here, and use it as corner bracing. Right now, we're not trying to keep out horses or keep in horses. So I still like to overbuild everything. It's just easier. I always say when I build a fence, I really don't want to touch it again for the rest of my life. So I try to do it overbuilt that way. I really don't have to go back to it. Now, we are under trees. So it's going to be a short run, but I guarantee you within the next five years, we're going to have a tree limb drop because of a storm and crush it. That's okay. The way it is uh, for the location. Fortunately, it's a short run and we're doing it for chickens. Now, we're going to have that going all the way to there. I have to get some screws. I don't know if I have three and a half inch deck screws I may have to run to Wally World but you can see it's progressing and uh, my wife said oh we'll have this done in the afternoon and I'm like ah, no it's probably gonna be about three days of good hard work because uh, the key to stretching fence and make it look good is all in the preparation um, you can see this has got a little bit of kink and bend in it. We're going to have to straighten and correct this. Look at all those ants right there. How about that? And uh, we're going to have to reinforce this thing a little bit better than it was. So, nothing but a little bit of hard work. There you go. Fortunately, these are those black ants that really don't bite. They bite some, but not too bad. More to come, guys. Okay, guys, I'll show you what we have finished uh, today. We have this section finished. All we have to do is take it down, stretch it. Now, several things have to happen, and they have to happen in the morning time because we have to move the critters into here. So it, it all, uh, we can't all just like put this up today and then we'll put this up tomorrow. You, you know, we have to do everything in stages quickly in one afternoon. That stuff is setting and curing. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be our, our counter post where we connect to. Come on, we'll walk in here. This is something I was working on. I hate scabbing to small pieces of wire. I'd rather buy another roll to a degree. Uh, this is um, red wire. Red wire's 180 bucks for 330 feet. So, you know, you always have to be careful with what you say you want to do or can't, will do and can't do. This is coming down but it can't come down until tomorrow, till we get all this set up. I've been in here cleaning and cutting and clearing this out. Hooch has been out here helping. Ah, there we go. There's a creek, three season creek. It does flow. It is clear water. A little bit above this, uh, a little bit below this is where people put their discharge for their um, laundry and stuff like that. So up here, good water. Not to say I would not clean and filter it. So that's one thing that, that I do not have to worry about too terribly much. And as things progress and times progress, we're going to dig a well. We got plans, we got plans, guys. So this right here, goodness gracious. 330 feet red wire. That's heavy. There was a time a few years ago I'd pick it up, throw it on my shoulder and walk with it and lay it out. I can't quite do it anymore. It's kind of funny. 
Uh, back when I was 45, I could do it. I'm 52. I can't quite do it. It's, you know, close to 200 pounds, but this is what we got situated. We're going to stretch it all tight so you don't have to worry, uh, top and bottom, and we will attach it and get it all situated so it will be nice. We're going to use a lot of the natural trees, uh, as many as we can since nobody's back in here but us and this is our property up into well actually we own almost to the end of the creek all that junk right there is old crap that was here so no i hadn't been drinking that's just old nasty beer thing. but we're getting all this stuff situated so it has been a job an adventure a journey that's heavy um but we will get it all finished up, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, I think it will look pretty dang good. Why are we doing this? Why, why do we do this at all? I mean, this is, people ask me all the time, why in the world you make a good living? Why do you worry about chickens and eggs and, and all that stuff and make a side income? So I'm glad you asked. More to come. Okay, guys, now we're back. Why do I do this hustle and uh, side gigs and uh, do eggs and do all the other little things I do? Because we never know when exactly one is going to wear out. That's cool chicken. There you go. You never know when one is going to wear out. And my dad beat this into me when I was a young man. And by young, I mean five and six on. You have three sources of income, minimum, at least. You have three sources of income coming in, and they should at least each third of an income should pay half of what you need. So everything overlaps. And again, like, I, I'm not kidding, guys. This is what my dad instilled in me, and he did himself. So I can't complain or bitch too much because dad did the same thing that he forced me to do. Always, 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 always you have a three sources of income. And I've told my boss this, and he says, well, I guess that's a really good idea. And he said, but why would you do this? And I was like, in case you fire my ass. And he was, okay, so you don't have to depend on me. And I said, I never would. And he was like, oh, so this is independence. This is what it is. Now, always, always, always have three sources of income. It may not be a full 50%, but it'll bring in something, and something better than nothing, guys. I'm going to start doing all the small engine stuff I used to do again, just for the heck of it, because I have a feeling that things are going to get really, really snarky. And I want to have as much of an income as I can coming in. Uh, to support my family. I don't know. But we have a really good start on this fencing. I appreciate you guys coming along. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'm going to cover all my stuff up, put it up, because it looks like we are about to get a little bit of precipitation. Take care of you people.